In this session, I'm going to give you eight ways to spot a false prophet. Yes, eight ways to positively identify false prophets. Now, a person doesn't have to have all eight attributes in order to be a false prophet. Any one of these would qualify a person as being a false prophet. But we have to be very careful. Don't be hasty in labeling anybody as a false prophet. Remember, to accuse somebody as being a false prophet is a very serious thing. So don't just go around calling anybody and everybody false prophets. We have too many people who do that today. It's like anybody they disagree with is a false prophet. It's like they see false prophets behind every bush. And don't forget, there are those people who used to be false prophets. People who have acknowledged their error and have changed. They're not false prophets anymore. So they should not be shamed as being a false prophet, as they aren't anymore. I'm going to start with the book of Deuteronomy, and then I'm going to go into the Shepherd of Hermas. The Shepherd of Hermas is a very powerful book, packed with scriptural truth. It was actually found in the oldest Bible known to man. That is the Codex Sinaiticus. It was found in the New Testament, along with all the other New Testament books. So it's very important for Christians to read the Shepherd of Hermas. So let's start. Number eight, you can identify a false prophet by their inaccurate prophecies. Let's read it in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20. God is speaking here, but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Verse 21, And if you say in your heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? Verse 22, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. So to paraphrase, if a prophet says that such and such a thing will happen on a certain date and it doesn't happen, that's the thing that the Lord has not spoken. And it says here that that prophet has spoken presumptuously. Now, for those of you who really want to do some deep research and deep study on false prophets, you must read the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah says a lot of things about presumptuous prophets, people who think they hear God, but they don't. Most false prophets are actually well-meaning people. They really believe that they hear from God, but they're not hearing from God. They are prophesying out of their own heart, out of their own spirits, and sometimes by evil spirits. So the book of Jeremiah says a lot about presumptuous prophets. And it says here, thou shalt not be afraid of him, which means he doesn't deserve to be respected as a prophet. He doesn't deserve to be honored as a prophet. Number seven, false prophets prophesy out of lusts. Now, I'm not talking about just sexual lust. I'm talking about materialism. Let's read about that in the Shepherd of Hermas. I'm reading from the Lightfoot translation. Now, this is found in Mandate 11. In other translations, it's called Commandment 11. Here, it's also called Chapter 43. I'm going to start on verse 2 here because it says false prophets target those that are doubtful of mind, that have weak faith. So it says, these doubtful-minded ones then come to him, that is to the false prophet, as to a soothsayer and inquire of him what shall befall them, almost like a fortune teller. And he, the false prophet, having no power of a divine spirit in himself, speaks with them according to their inquiries and according to the lusts of their wickedness and fills their souls as they themselves wish. So how does a false prophet prophesy according to their lusts? Okay, I said before, it's not just sexual lust, but it's also materialism. A false prophet might say, you're going to get a new car. You're going to get a new house. You're going to get a pay raise. You know, you're going to get favor with your boss. All this stuff that is prophesied is really just enticing your lust. Number six, false prophets are ear ticklers. We read that in the next verse. This is verse three. For being empty himself, he gives empty answers to empty inquirers. For whatever inquiry may be made of him, he answers according to the emptiness of the man. False prophets 
prophesy things that other people love to hear. Oh, God is on your side. It's like in the days of Micaiah, there were 400 false prophets and one true prophet, Micaiah. The 400 false prophets prophesied things that the kings loved to hear. Oh, God is on your side. You are going to win the battle. God is going to give you the victory. Whereas the true prophet said, the opposite is true. God is not on your side. You're not going to get the victory. So don't even try to go to war because you're going to die. But you see, the king listened to the false prophets, all 400 of them. I mean, the majority ruled there. It cost him his life. False prophets are what I call fortune cookie prophets because their prophecies resemble the messages that you get in fortune cookies. Notoriously ambiguous and unrealistically positive. Number five, false prophets like to mingle truth with error. We read that in the second half of that verse. It says here, but he speaks also some true words for the devil fills him with his own spirit. If so be, he shall be able to break down some of the righteous. So the devil knows how to deceive the righteous by taking a lot of truth and adding some lies into it. And that's what false prophets do. You might say, wow, that false prophet said this and this, and it was true, and it's amazing. But you don't mention the fact that the false prophet also prophesied things that were false. Number four, false prophets prophesy on demand. And we can read that in verses 5 and 6. It says, For no spirit given of God needs to be consulted, but having the power of deity, it says here, speaking all things of itself. In other words, God is sovereign. He'll speak when he wants to. Because it is from above, even from the power of the divine spirit. Verse 6, But the spirit which is consulted and speaks according to the desires of men is earthly and fickle, having no power, and it speaks not at all unless it be consulted. Now, there is another translation of this that actually makes it a little bit clearer, and that's called the Roberts Donaldson translation. And this is what it says here in this passage. For he who inquires of a false prophet in regard to any action is an idolater and devoid of the truth and foolish. For no spirit given by God requires to be asked. But such a spirit, having the power of divinity, speaks all things of itself. God speaks when he wants to. For it proceeds from above, from the power of the divine spirit. But the spirit which is asked and speaks according to the desires of men is earthly, light, and powerless. And it is altogether silent if it is not questioned. False prophets are very predictable, in other words. They're like machines. You go up to them and push the right buttons and oh, pops a prophecy. That's not the way God works. You know, sometimes in scripture, it says that God is silent. It says there was a period of time, a number of years when there were no visions. And number three, false prophets avoid the righteous. We read that in verse nine, verse 13 and verse 14. Now verse nine here is talking about a true prophet. It says, when then the man who has the divine spirit, the Holy Spirit, comes into an assembly of righteous men who have faith in a divine spirit and intercession is made to God by the gathering of those men, then the angel of the prophetic spirit who is attached to him fills the man and the man being filled with the Holy Spirit speaks to the multitude according as the Lord wills. Now, before I go on to verse 13, I want to share with you a pastor who once told me that, you know, way back in the day when the prophet came to town, sinners wouldn't dare go to that meeting. If you go to that meeting, you make sure you repent of your sin first because they knew that if you don't repent of your sin first, that prophet will call you out. Going down to verse 13, this is talking about the false prophets now. In the next place, it never approaches an assembly of righteous men. Now, comparing this to what we just read, because we read about what the true prophets do, now the false prophets, it says here, it never approaches an assembly of righteous men, but avoids them and cleaves to the doubtful-minded and empty and prophesies to them in corners and deceives them, speaking all things in emptiness to gratify their desires. For they too are empty whom it answers. Verse 14 but when he, that is the false prophet, comes into an assembly full of righteous men 
who have a spirit of deity, the Holy Spirit, and intercession is made from them, that man is emptied, and the earthly spirit flees from him in fear. And that man is struck dumb and is altogether broken in pieces, being unable to utter a word. Now, apparently, these kind of things happened in the church back then because we read about this kind of thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 24 and 25. Let's read it. But if all prophesy and one come in that doesn't believe or is unlearned, he is convinced of all. That word convinced there means convicted. He's convicted of all. He is judged of all. Those prophets, the real true prophets, they judge people. Verse 25, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. The secrets of his heart are made manifest. The prophets know his secret sins. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. That's powerful. When the sinner comes into the congregation of the righteous, the prophets prophesy of that sin, point out the secret sins that nobody else would know. That person falls down on their face in repentance and says, truly, I know now that God truly is among you. Number two, false prophets prophesy for gain. We read about that in verse 12 here, back in the shepherd of Hermas. Back here in verse 12, it says, In the first place, that man who seems to have a spirit exalts himself and desires to have a chief place, and straightway he is impudent and shameless and talkative and conversant in many luxuries and in many other deceits and receives money for his prophesying. If he receives it not, he prophesies not. How can a divine spirit receive money and prophesy? It is not possible for a prophet of God to do this. But the spirit of such prophets is earthly. I actually know of a guy who went on a crowdfunding website and he was raising money for a certain project. And he said something like, well, give $20 and I will prophesy for five minutes. Give like $100 and I'll prophesy for 15 minutes. You know, give uh, $1,000 and I'll prophesy over you for half an hour. I kid you not. That is what he did. Fits the profile here in multiple points. And number one, you can tell a false prophet by his pride. Let's read it again in verse 12. In the first place, that man who seems to have a spirit exalts himself and desires to have a chief place. Now, there are many ways that false prophets can operate in pride. Think about this for a minute. That is what these people actually live off of. Their foundation is pride. It's like, they don't say this, but deep within their heart, it's like, see how important I am. I hear directly. God's, God speaks. God Almighty, who made the universe, is bigger than the universe, speaks to me all the time. I can just hear his voice. I can just say, you know, speak and he'll speak at any time. Look how important I am. I hear the voice of God. You don't. Let me prophesy to you. Let me give you a word from the Lord. See how important, see how special I am that God, even God, takes time out to speak to me. And that's the way it is with a lot of these false prophets. And one of the greatest ways that they manifest that is that they assume they are self-proclaimed prophets. They add the title prophet before their name. Pro I'm Prophet John. I'm Prophet Tom. Hi, I'm Prophet Bob. Isaiah didn't do that. He didn't go around, Hi, I'm Prophet Isaiah. I am Prophet Isaiah. Hi, I'm Prophet Micah. Hi, I'm Prophet Jeremiah. Call me Prophet. Call me Prophet. None of them did that. None. They were humble. False prophets love to assume the title prophet. There you have it. Eight attributes of false prophets. If this has blessed you, make sure you like this, you subscribe, and you share it with your family and your friends. Blessings.